Mr. Keith, this is a bird that uh, I believe was bred for both beauty and utility. No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, these silver laced wine dots, I guess they came from the mid 19th century up around in New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, up in the north, northeastern part of the U.S. is where it was created up there, one of the old American breeds that we have. Now the breeding for these is really bred for those cold winters. Right, and, and it is, it's, it's, a, it's a good dual purpose type of bird, primarily geared towards the cold weather environment. Very large bird, heavy set, heavily feathered. See the comb, uh, sits close to the head, a rose type comb, sits very close to the head so it can withstand colder temperatures. Yeah, it's not a likely to freeze right, like a right. tall standard uh, You're right. single comb would. You're right, and it does very well in really cold climates in the U.S. and, and can be considered a good egg lane, or a decent egg lane bird and, and also a dual purpose meat bird. And some of these types of birds with a silver lacing on this is also a very striking to look at. Yeah, so for the home flock, this is a beautiful bird to have around absolutely. the place. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. They lay a beautiful classic brown egg with some variation among these hens. We'll get uh, shade, all shades of brown with the eggs. Mm -hmm. As a general rule with, with uh, chickens, if they've got a red earlobe, they're typically going to lay some sort of a colored egg. Um, now that can have, like you said, variations in that coloring from a dark brown to a lighter brown. But a lot of people like that brownish um, egg color rather than the white. Kind of reminds them a little bit more of the farm type setting. You know, for a family of four, depending on how often they eat eggs, uh, you know, 10, 12 hens would probably be good, particularly a wind up breed like this that's not going to be the best laying bird in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I discourage people from having two hens or four hens. Uh, you know, if you're going to have the effort of having a pen, give them feed, give them water, and give them the right environment, you might as well, you know, have eight, 10, 12 hens and, and give some to your neighbors. They're going to they're gonna love you for it too, anyway, so. Well, the chickens are, they're, they're a social animal and they run in a flock, and so you really need, they, they, they like having company, don't they? Right, they do, they do. And there are some regulations within city limits that, that uh, certain cities will allow you to have maybe four hens or six hens, so you gotta pay attention to that, but, you know, they do. They like to run the flock and they, they watch out for each other and, and that's kind of their nature. The minimum space is, is a two to three square feet per bird would be minimum. Yeah. Uh, very, the What's bare the minimum. the industry? Industry is two. Two square feet per bird for the hens. Um, a little bit more for the males. And, and that's, a, that's a minimum. That's in a confined situation and that gives them, that gives them room to, to do their thing as a chicken and, and you know, give them comfort and they're, they're, uh, they do well in that, that situation. But for a home flock, we typically aren't going to want to do that if we, if we can help it. 10 square feet per bird even. even yeah, well, uh, 10, 10 uh, per square feet, if you had 12 birds, it'd just be 120 square feet. Yeah, and that's not much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that'd just be a, a 12 by 10 pen. Right, right. Yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of room yeah. in your backyard. And part of that can be in an in a enclosed area where they can get in at night, and then a the small part of that can be a little open area where they can get out and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah. You know, dust and do the things that chickens like to do, and scratch around. And... Well, the thing I always suggest to people is make sure you can lock them up at night because oh, it's yeah. those nighttime predators that yeah. tend to get them, raccoons or possums, you know, house cats can even get some of the smaller birds. Yeah, absolutely, you gotta protect them at night because even neighbor's pets will become predators at some point. <laughs> You know, one of the nice things about the wine dots is they've got just a great disposition. You see how gentle these are. Yeah, they're, they're very friendly bird, gentle, kind of slow moving, not, mm -hmm. not considered one of the hyperactive, high maintenance, <laughs> high strong birds. But right. Great for a family type situation, especially if you have kids and want to go out and feed the chickens and, and interact with them a little bit. These are pretty young, about nine to 10 months old, so just beginning to start to lay. I'm going to let her go. Yep. There you go, girl. I think they'll both be glad to get away. <laughs> Well, you may need to take a few Wyandotte eggs home with you. I probably will. It's a good <laughs> bird to have. Good to have you here again, Keith. Of course.